there was a distinct moment where I was in a relationship that sort of, as often they do, fell apart, but it was pivotal for me to sort of go into this state of suffering, which then revealed some of the deeper constraints that I had developed over time, really associated to my parents' passing. What were they, if you don't mind me asking? No, not at all. It was around the, the big one was around the fear of loss. So, Abandonment? Loss, um, loss I mean, abandonment, you could say, was sort of like the psychiatrist way of labeling okay, it. But okay. really, as human beings, we have a, I would assert, like an inbuilt fear of losing stuff that we perceive, we perceive as valuable. Yes. So, you know, obviously my parents being the archetypes of security and nourishment and care and love and those going, there was a distinct feeling of a loss, right? Uh, especially at that age, I can't even think even though it's me, it's sort of weird to think of a seven-year-old whose mother dies of cancer and the inability to process that, right? So it's sort of like a form of mental indigestion. Like, so I wasn't able to actually understand it, but viscerally it's going to have its impact. So when I met this one girl who at the time, as I understood love, which really wasn't love as I've subsequently now understood it, It was more that puppy romantic love. Um, When she decided that she had to go, which was, as far as I'm concerned, life setting me up for awakening, um, I went back into that fear of loss, right? And so that became the catalyst for my mind to sort of unravel at the time, not in an attractive way. You know, I wasn't sleeping. I was calling everybody under the sun to find out how do I get this girl back? You know, desperate men doing desperate things. Um, Not that I was doing anything nuts, but I was just, you know, sad. I I just, I, I missed her. So, but that led to this sort of big epiphany of me realizing that the very structure and nature of life is uncertainty. And as a human being, we have a component of us that's always trying to find certainty in uncertainty. And it just struck me at what a complete waste of time that was. Because if the nature of life is uncertainty, it doesn't matter how much I try and fucking figure it out. All I'm going to do is get exhausted and still not know. Yep. <laughs> so at that moment, it was literally like my levitation moment, my moksha, my awakening, my enlightenment, where I really realized that life is the unknown. And for the first time ever in my life, I was totally comfortable with that. It was really just sort of out of left field. I mean, I was sitting in a rent control apartment, same one that I'd been with just, you know, when I first arrived in LA. And it was a room that was probably about 200 square feet had everything that I owned in the room, bed, bookshelves, clothes, desk. And uh, I was just sitting there at my desk and my mind had, the lead up had been a, a multitude of sort of really what were unanswerable questions, but nonetheless, the mind gets on this talk track of trying to figure them out, right? So it was, will I ever see her again? Is she dating someone? Is she, where is she? Am I ever gonna meet anyone as sexy as her? Am I, you know, fundamentally, am I going to be okay? Like all these questions that I literally didn't know the answer to. And so even though for a few days, a few weeks, I'd been trying to resolve that discomfort that comes with that uncertainty and suffering, the epiphany moment was sitting in my chair at this desk in this tiny little rent control apartment. um, And I just got the answer to all of the questions. And it was three words, I don't know. And the relief that hit me was like nothing I'd ever experienced. That to me was quintessential freedom. So at that moment, I realized that the angst and the suffering I was feeling as a byproduct of trying to find the answer to those questions was actually all resolvable in the answer to all of the questions, which was, I don't know. But for the first time, as I said, in my life, not only did I get the answer to the questions, I was completely at peace not knowing. Surrender. Total surrender. So what what made the moment even more profound, and this is where we could take sort of the Buddha part, which is the awakening and make it very Einstein-like, was within 15 minutes, 15 minutes of me having that epiphany, my phone rings. I didn't even have a cell phone at that time. It was just my desk phone, landline, and I pick it up. And it's the girl who had left seven, eight weeks previous. Now, I hadn't spoken to her for probably about five or six weeks. So there's a good period of silence, right? Now, in the two or three weeks prior to that, where we hadn't had any communication and we were chatting a little bit, I was the one desperate, right? Like sort of not necessarily directly saying it, but hoping she said, you know, we'll give it another go. I'll come back or whatever it was, right? So now I pick up the phone. It's her. And she's crying, saying, I miss you so much. 
Now, that all sounds great in the romantic realm, like, oh, good, they're going to reconcile. But shift now. Yes. But what I got out of that was the intuitive understanding of the energetic entanglement, mm. right? So that I had literally become available. The previous iteration of our relationship was where I was in a relationship with my own fears, unbeknownst to me. So I wasn't a bad guy. I was super loving and caring and gifts for no reason. And on the surface, uh, surface I was a perfect boyfriend. To, to this day, she still asserts that that was the case. But because life set me up for success, she had to go away so that I could have this epiphany such that then I actually, for the first time, was truly available to her. Because I wasn't coming from a place of fear of loss of her. I was actually, what I would assert, in a position of intimacy with her, energetic. So even though, and this is how powerful it is, she couldn't have been further. Somehow from LA, she'd gotten to New Zealand. <laughs> she was literally as far as she could be on the planet. Wow. But based on the laws of entanglement, which is, you know, you're just an atom over here and simultaneously, instantaneously, so too does the other one that's connected to it. So the entanglement theory to me was just demonstrated there in real life, which is my shield dropped, my fear dropped, I'm transparently available, we had a soul bond, whatever you want to call it, and she felt that to the point that she could reach out. You know, there's a great Buddhist quote that says, the greater the pain, the greater the awakening. Yeah. There you have it, guys. Thanks for tuning in to Unstoppable with me, your host, Kerwin Ray. And please do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel where you get to see all of these interviews in the, the flesh. Share this podcast with your friends. I would love to hear what you guys think. Thanks for joining us.